Welcome to Reviewer's View. Peter Berninger and Terry Aringi. We're here to report on the Capital Audio Fest 2015. Terry, kick it off. What did you like about the Cap Fest? A lot of things, Peter. I was a little wary about going into a new hotel because I liked last year's hotel so much. But boy, the sound at this hotel was probably one of the best sounds at a show that I heard this year. Go- this and the, the THE show Newport mm-hmm. um, was another very good sounding show, but this this show was amazing. The small rooms were incredible. Yeah, they switched venues. Uh, it's now in the Hilton in a Rockville, Maryland. <laughs> and the Hilton has an atrium area that has eight floors up. Uh, they have a perimeter walkway on each floor, so you can go over and bend over and look over the railing down eight floors and get a little bit of vertigo. But it enables you to really feel as part, the whole hotel is like all together. Mm. So there was exhibit rooms on the third floor and fourth <clears> floor. <throat> so if you're up on a higher level floor in the atrium, you can look down and you can see people milling about. You can see the registration area off through the side. So it was a very intimate feel about the hotel. I think it really added to the effect of the show and that we all felt like we were in some big venue together. But it didn't have that big feel. The show, how many? About, about 40 rooms or so, about right? 40, yeah, yeah yep. I think. Yep, uh, the one part of the hotel had the executive conference center where the larger rooms were. So you had over there VPI and the big voice of the yeah, system and yeah. the big systems like that. Which, kick off, how about VPI? Oh, how about it? <laughs> how about it's like that? the VPI marketplace, an adjunct to the Capitol Audio Fest. I know. You go in that room, it was, Peter, it was never empty. It was yeah. bustling morning, noon, and night, and that's not an exaggeration. And the people were lined up where they had the turntables on each side of the wall, yeah. with headphones on their heads yeah. down, and real serious business. Lynn Stanley came in and performed, and everybody loved her, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, Harry Harry uh, was was playing his Stephen Eady album. That's right. On the Avenger, yeah. the brand new dynamic looking turntable, the Avenger. It's, it's really something special. It was a very good sounding room too. Yeah, yeah. Considering all the bodies and all the things that were going on in the room, you could hear really good music in the room. Well, you could, and it was a very long <laughs> room, mini ballroom like you see in the hotels. Uh, but this one was very long, and so the system was set up on the short wall, and there was ample seating for I don't know how many rows of people. I mean, it was it was again, and Terry, you're <laughs> right, it was mobbed all the time. Okay. And in the perimeter of the room, they had tables set up around the edges. And there must have been 15, 20 turntables. I mean, it was just turntable city. And all of the employees, VPI employees were there. They were introduced. Yeah, yeah. Their functions at VPI were, were mentioned. It was it was very well run. Uh, congratulations, Matt and Harry. Yeah. They really but, did a great job. It was a very special event at Capital Audio Fest 2015. Yeah, it sure was. And then Matt and Harry <laughs> did a uh, turntable setup, a, a seminar. And these two, I'll tell you, they, what quality guys these guys are. Harry and Matt working together. Harry will talk about one subject. Matt would take over another subject. Mm-hmm. They were just made for <laughs> uh, for being in front of people. Yeah. Heck, I mean, turntables are so hot today. The company's on a roll. New products. Uh, it's exciting times for VPI. Yeah, There's I no agree. doubt. Yep, yep. I agree. The other um, really special event was tucked away in a corner on, I don't know if it was the third or fourth floor, in the audio note room. Oh, uh, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> Dave had uh, scheduled sessions with the world famous cellist Vincent Bollinger. He played bits and pieces from his new CD that's mm-hmm. going to be released in mm-hmm. uh, French. A French piece and a Spanish the, piece, and a, German, and, a, and a German and a German piece, and it was really interesting yeah. because he said he said <laughs> he's sitting right. Th- I mean, as far as we are from the camera and the microphone is where Vincent was sitting, and as soon as the bow struck the cello, oh my gosh! I mean, it was I could just feel the wave launch of uh, sitting behind the camera, working the camera, and when we cut back and we played the raw video of it, and we put it through the headphone out, we just quickly hooked it up for the for the big system and into a line input stage and on the audio note level five system, it was as if the cello was right in the room. I've never heard reproduced sound in any home yeah, environment very special. that realistic as that cello. Wait to, to share yeah. it with Vincent yeah. And, yeah. and Dave Cope who ran the room. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Dave said something to the effect in the video that I'm either very brave to do this or I'm crazy. <laughs> 
And you know, I, I struck me he's right because to have live music of, yeah. of that uh, caliber yeah. in front of an audio note or any a system and try to compare, I thought it, it sounded really beautiful together. Yeah, I mean, you, I, you didn't hear a huge difference. I didn't anyway. What, between the yeah, real cello the and, real, uh, and, and the recorded I mean, cello? Of course, you knew yeah. what was law, yeah. music, but yeah. it wasn't this dramatic difference where you could say, oh, well. That's it. Reproduced music is nothing like the real thing. Yeah, now we've yeah. come a long way. I think. Yeah, yeah, we sure have come a long way, and that's a must-watch video, yeah. and it's perhaps the best video <laughs> we've ever shot. So pl please uh, get get on that video and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, use a good pair of headphones, or stream it to your big system, or use a patch cord to patch in from your computer over to your big system. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> Let's lead off with the rooms. Um, your favorite room? Favorite room, classic audio. I'll be darned. I'll that be darned. wins an award because the third day, John Wolfe, you were playing Stevie Ray Vaughan's Tin Pan Alley yep. loud. And I loud. Said, Is that John's room? I walked in. If I didn't feel like I was at a concert there, I don't know where I ever felt that mm -hmm. way. This was so compelling. The little guy that was that worked for the hotel, that was young fellow standing outside the room, mm -hmm. was doing all he could to, to not go in the room and sit down. Because it was so compelling. I had yeah. to go in. He was, uh, he had his T1, are those the T1? T1.5, in fact. 1.5. Okay, You're okay right. thank yep. you. Yep. And yep. he had a Kuzma turntable. It was mm -hmm. like 2006 or 2005, he said. Mm -hmm. He had the triplanar arm mm -hmm. and a grasshopper. Yeah, Grasshopper Gold 3. Right, and mm -hmm. of course it was all wired with purest audio design cables. Yeah, and the atmosphere amps. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Ralph's yeah, the, uh, atmosphere yep, amps. Yep. Yeah. Oh, John, you have to play that song more often at shows. Well, everybody, Rocky Mountain. everybody plays that song too much at shows. So. I, yeah, but it never sounded like in this room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, he wasn't there. I was on my own. Terry was on her own. <laughs> Or you're next. Okay, I'm next. My favorite room at uh, the whole show was uh, was the Gershman Acoustics room, and they had these. Uh, I don't know. They're about this big. This is a thirteen thousand uh, dollar product, Grande Avant Garde, and we played tracks off of Chasing the the Dragon, the, the Mike Valentine Pulpery recording sampler that we use a lot at shows. And as soon as I think we started off with the with the harp track, and as soon as the plucking of the harp. I knew, I thought, oh my gosh, that's the best I think I've ever heard that sound. And then we went on to the dueling uh, mandolins, and then we played some of the chimes and the uh, kind of the spatial uh, music track. And every track was, to me, the best I had ever heard at a show. So, I mean, I stood there, I just went right over to, uh, to, to Ellie Gershman. Uh, he's, a, he's a designer of the loudspeaker, and I said, this is the best sound that I've, I think I have heard my, this CD on at a show. And he got all, you know, he was all smiley faced and stuff. You'll see it in the video and you will hear it, it in the video. It was a very popular room. Very popular. Yep, crowded. very popular room. So, so that. Word got around. Yeah, word did get around on that. I also want to give a, a shout out of one of my favorite rooms. Another Gold Show winner was the Volte Room. And I've heard the Vittorias many times. I've heard them in big rooms, I've heard them in smaller rooms, but this small hotel room, these are good acoustic rooms at, at, this, uh, at the Hilton. Uh, they had them set up about 11, 11, 12 foot apart, and I was on an equilateral triangle in the sweet spot. You had to be in the center seat. If you were off to the right or off to the left, you did not get that total focus, yeah, yeah. and it was enveloping. And I did not hear any of that honky horn sound. I did not hear any brightness in the upper mid-range. I did not hear any imbalance between the bass. They had one of their subwoofers, uh, only one, and it was way off to the right side. So it just kind of broke the rules because usually I like to have two subwoofers evenly spaced on next to each speaker or near about each speaker, and this one way off to the side, and it was totally coherent. I mean... I really get the Volte sound now, and I think that if you are interested in that Volte loudspeaker, set them up similar to as you see in the video, and uh, you will be one happy camper. I would not want for even, uh, any other speaker if I had that kind of sound as a, on a desert island. It was really that and good. And Greg had his yeah. own Macintosh electronics. Yeah, oh yeah. Just bought. Yeah, yeah, Greg Roberts, uh, the, yep, uh, the CEO of Volte Audio, bought some uh, Macintosh reissues. 
and man, were they sounding really good. I yeah. mean, and then they're so beautiful to look at. Ugh. Yeah. Um, Another room. Okay, my second room is the DSA room. Oh. Run by David Skolnick, mm -hmm. his usual enthusiastic self. Yes. I uh, did a great job. Uh, I, I went in in the morning and I, there was a little bit of darkness mm -hmm. and you even agreed with me and I thought this this promise to this room so I made a point of going back the third day mm -hmm. and they tweaked it or fixed whatever they had to fix mm -hmm. and it was wonderful he he played some Frank Sinatra and then the Beatles uh, mono, mono box, box set, set yep. that um that everybody was just thrilled I mean that's hard to sound bad that that it, it the really, Beatles yeah. mono set, but, yeah, but this was really extra good, and I was very enthusiastic about it. Uh, yeah, they had the jo Joseph Audio uh, Pearl. Pearl. The I think Pearl, Pearl loudspeakers. Pearl, I think it's a Pearl 3, the, the newest version. and uh, Luminous it, cables. Yeah, it was really, really the, good. The uh, Avenger turntable had three arms, mm -hmm. and they were two... Uh, he was playing the mono box set with the uh, VPI Classic 4. Yes arm mm -hmm. with a an autophone a mono cartridge and 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 i was told that the autophone mono car cartridge was um issued to coincide with the release of that box set. of that box set so it was, but harry also showed us harry weisfeld he showed us he has a new long gimbaled arm and people like the gimbaled arms over the unipivots because they have more confidence. They don't wobble when you pick them up and stuff. And I like the unipivots for their sonic, for their big sound space. Uh, but a lot of people like the confidence of a gimbaled arm. And Harry has one where you can take a pin out of the back and take the arm wand off. So you can switch arms and cartridges just like that. And that's nifty. That's the first gimbaled arm I've ever seen that's removable like that. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yep. hats off to the DSA room. Of course, they had the DSA Phone stage. Phone and stage and the line stage. The and yep. the line stage. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, what's another room, Peter? Well, I really had a good uh, a good visit in the GT Audio room. Mm. GT Audio, uh, Greg from Northern New Jersey uh, makes these uh, planar magnetic speakers. We heard them two years ago at the Capitol Audio Fest. Huge promise. And a lot of people were buzzing about it uh, two years ago. He didn't exhibit last year. He's been toiling away, fine-tuning the product, reinventing some of the technology in the product, redoing the crossovers. And this is a finished product, and it's stunning. 9000 retail introductory price. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. it can compete against the big boys. It can compete against $100,000 loudspeakers because you have the detail and transparency of a world-class loudspeaker, the coherency top to bottom of a well-engineered unit because it's using two technologies. It's using the planar magnetic panels for the mid-range and tweeters, and it's using a conventional woofer uh, built into the base. The fit and finish was very strong, very good looking, a very handsome product. It's not too domineering. It's only about that wide. It's tall. It's about uh, five and a half, six foot tall. And uh, it just was, the sound was just, uh, oh my gosh, it was like you were there. And you'll hear it in the video too. Uh, everything that, w it, all the audiophile check boxes, it ticked off. So that was a great big shout out to GT Audio. They really hit a home run this year. Really, yeah, really Peter, good. Yeah, I missed it because I was doing something else. Mm -hmm. But he didn't stop talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So you know, the audiophile hat comes on. It's just like by, by default, the AV showroom's hat falls off. Audiophile hat comes on. And when I went up to the toward the end of his auditioning, he had that look in his eye that audiophiles have. <laughs> you don't exist. Only me and my sound. Only me and my sound. Get out of here. <laughs> Swat. So I knew he had he had experienced something very exciting. It was really good. Yeah. It was really good. Another really good room, uh, the Salk Ginkgo room, <laughs> and that had uh, the Wells uh, Imarata amplifier. I forget what model oh, of yeah. Jim Salk speakers. Do you know that how beautiful good. these speakers are? You have to see these things in in person to see the veneer work and the clear coat. Yeah, they're beautiful. They stand out. They stand out, and the sound. Uh, it was the first day, I think we went. It right? was the and first was day, that good. and it was that good. So, if you're out there, if you're in a show, or if you're looking for a beautiful loudspeaker that sounds wonderful, you want to check out uh, Sock uh, Sock Sound. Uh, and they, and they paired with Ginkgo too. Yeah, they were paired. They had the Dana cables, yes, and they had the, the cloud cables. technology. That's those mm -hmm. rubber balls uh, that have a little uh, 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 how do you put it? Like a, a foundation on top, and so it acts as a it's a very energy nice dissipation product. product. Yeah, 
Yeah, we have uh, we had the cloud technology under the Triangle Art Turntable. That's correct. Yeah, it made the soundstage bigger, uh, images a little bit more too. focused, and it was yeah, good looking. Yeah. good looking too, good looking. So another one, I, and I'll throw this out. Really, really big uh, event, or I should say, new product uh, uh, rollout. Dan Wright of Modric. He heard a single out of an amplifier yeah, over the past 18 this months, surprising. and this was a shocker. So. Now, I've listened to lots of single ended amplifiers, but I'm not an audio designer. If I was an audio designer, I would probably look into designing. Well, that's what Dan did. So he teamed up with uh, Jack Eliano of Electroprint, uh, Lou Daedalus of Daedalus Loudspeakers, and there was another uh, uh, designer who did the CNC machining uh, and built the, a new amplifier. Uh, it's uh, based, uh, it's a single ended amplifier, EL84 is 10 watts per channel, uh, and it was dropped. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah, we'll see. Oh. We'll, we'll, you'll see the video. You'll see the video. Now, this Dan's not going to go into the single ended <laughs> amplifier manufacturing business full time. These are special order products, Dan was telling me. Uh, these are products that would be the pride of any audiophile's uh, reference uh, SET system. And if you have questions about it, you can get on avshowroomsforums.com. Yep. Modrite has their own forum, yep. and Dan is very friendly. We'd love to speak to you about his new amp, and any any questions you have for him about it. Yeah, that's right. We rolled out our forums uh, about a, a little over a month ago, and uh, the the traffic is is almost double of one of the established sites. So quickly, I, I don't we don't understand that, but it is a flame free environment. We don't allow dogma. We want people to talk about audio and their systems and what they enjoy about that, not about fighting each other or challenging each other. So it's a great forum board for audio, free of the flames. So a little, uh, you know, check that out, avshowroomsforums.com. Okay, another room. Oh, I liked Robin Wyatt's room. I always do. I do too, yep. Uh, you know, I think he and Jeff Catalano are neighbors in New York City. They well, indeed they're are. neighbors when it comes to being the kind of room that's very special, with very interesting products. Mm -hmm. Seems to be products that are very close to their heart. Mm -hmm. And they are a um, lover of music and um, audio equipment. But Robin, did we did the comparison on the um, Chasing the Dragon CD. Versus LP. So you'll down. see, yeah, we have, and we did this last year mm -hmm. from one room to another analog versus digital. Now we did it in the same room. So I challenge you, check out last year's videos. There's two of them. And now check out this year's video yeah. and see what you like, uh, what, what you prefer. It was, it was really sweet because, it, funny, Robin asked who liked the, um, the vinyl. Yeah. And a bunch of us raised our hands. Mm -hmm. Nobody hesitated. They all, mm -hmm. all, each camp knew what they liked. Mm -hmm. Who liked the digital better? And he said that the people that most people that liked the digital was standing up mm -hmm. rather than sitting down. And then there was one nice lady in the audience. She said, well, she was sitting down and said, I like the digital. And mm -hmm. she was almost ashamed to say it because she hears these wars of, you know, analog yeah. versus digital. Mm -hmm. And Robin was just a sweet self trying to give us There is no right or wrong. That's right. You like what you like, folks. And... Uh, I was really appreciative of the way Robin handled that. He did. He's he ran a real charming host in his room. He ran the room well. Quad mm -hmm. speakers. Uh, uh, it was just a, a a great sound. And speaking of quads, uh, oh, people yeah. say that the Capital Audio Fest is uh, has a lot of DIY or do it yourself influence. Well, there was really only two rooms uh, with with uh, with home built stuff. Uh, the one room had David Burning. He had built some loudspeakers. Some, uh, uh, I think he took the elements out of the quad speakers. And then there was another room uh, that featured a speaker that's uh, kind of co-designed by iJazz. He's a, a DC uh, area or Beltway area uh, member of this ad hoc group of people who like to build equipment themselves. And uh, he uh, he was with uh, with Dave Schlegel, and Dave did I think the electronics, and he built the amplifier for these quad panels, but they only use the basic, just the interior, just the actual drive element of the quad, and they built the loudspeaker around that. I mean, you're talking major build. I mean, you're, they had machined little pieces of, uh, like, mini tiptoes to hold the panels in, and they had all this custom uh, uh, CNC work done yeah. just to build a superstructure to hold the element of the speaker. Mm -hmm. And then one part of the amplifier drove the mid-tweeter, the other part drove the lower frequency panel. And it was unbelievable. 
I mean, I never heard bass like that out of a quad. So whatever you do, if you were ever, if you're a quad person, you've got to call Dave Schlegel and say, "What is going on with that?" And can you do that for me? Because it was awesome. A quad person. A quad person. <laughs> Like a pod person. Yeah, no, no, quad, not pod, <laughs> quad. Terry. <laughs> it was really amazing. Dave is really uh, talented, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we had there was a lot of really good rooms. Uh, we you know, we can't we can't report on every one of them. We don't have time in reviewers' view to do that. Uh, another a, a good room, a very good room uh, was a neat room. Uh, that's English loudspeakers. Uh, Paul Manos brings those in. Mm. That sounded very good when he did, we did a comparison of the big ones, the reference speakers versus the little nine hundred ninety nine dollar ones. You you'll hear it. You'll hear a little bit less bass uh, with the smaller speakers. But the imaging, some guys was sitting there while we were doing the demo, and he said, are they the little speakers? He said, that's amazing. So, yeah, it was amazing. Terry, we always do this. What would you take home from the show? Oh, you've, you've had some time to think I about know. it. I have mine already selected, so I'm going to lead off with you and put you on the hot seat. What would you take it home? Is a Anything hot seat. at this show, what would you take home? Ooh, um, I think it would be... That Ortofon cartridge and the box set, even though that's not an audio program. <laughs> oh, the Beatles but, mono yeah. box set and the Ortofon mono cartridge. But the cartridge is audio. There you go. That is Just audio. Because I, okay. like, I like the mono so much. Okay, okay. We don't have a mono setup yet, but uh, we will have to have one uh, yeah, soon. Yeah, then, then we have it. to get a mono records. Yes, yeah, so and we have to start collecting mono records. That's okay. And my, my take home is the, the Phase 12 uh, with the power supply, uh, upper power supply tape deck from Greg Barone. And uh, that uh, just was making big, big music in the Jolita United Home Audio Room. Well, yeah, Whoa. I guess I take that for granted. And boy, was it beautiful. It's what was beautiful. it, like a pearl yeah, white? It was like a pearl white he white? had it painted. It was simply stunning. Oh, my God. We'll have a deck coming up here soon, uh, so you'll see Maybe it in here. Maybe that's why I didn't mention it, because I know it's coming. <laughs> yeah, we, it's coming now. So uh, we uh, we had to wait our uh, about our time for the deck. Uh, he had sales mm -hmm. ahead of us. So uh, you'll viewers, you'll be seeing the deck in, uh, in a lot of our videos and uh, on our Facebook promo, and we'll be talking about it on AV Showrooms forums. So all in all, what a great fest this year. Yeah. Hats off to Gary Gill. Uh, you really, really hit the ball out of the park. This was probably the most enjoyable audio show. I'm not going to just say the most or the best, but it was the most enjoyable audio show I can, I can remember in recent memory. It was that good. It was really good. You could handle it. It was. You could get spend lots of time in each room. Uh, again, Capital Audio Fest. I, uh, I, uh, I salute Gary Gill. Great job, bud. You really, really did a good job. Yeah, it was good. Thanks, yep. Gary. Yeah, thanks, Gary. And we'll see you viewers at the next show. We'll be at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest coming up in a, in just about a little less than a month. October second through the fourth. That's right. It's early this year. It is early this year. So see you, see you at Rocky Mountain. Bye. Bye.